Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Hello, hi everybody. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me today. This is You've Hit Upon Balanced Life, Conversations That Connect to a Healthier You. With me, I'm your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. And I'm so glad that you join me today because I've got a really good discussion to have with a great guest. And if you're single, you're going to like this. Or if you know someone who's single, you're going to like this. So stick around because it's going to be a provocative show and really, really fun. I also want to tell you that I'm a personal trainer, a fitness instructor, and a health and nutrition coach. And I call myself Balanced Life because that's what I do. I help people find balance with everything that feeds us in life. All this that has to be interconnected for us to enjoy a life of health, happiness, and joy, and longevity, which is really important, longevity with quality, as I always say. So if you're looking for someone to help you on your journey, if you're having a little bit trouble during any of these, this has been a really interesting last year and a half, almost two years now. Um, And if you feel like you want to get back on track or you want to start on track and you just want someone to talk to, I do free one-hour sessions to get get us going or to get you going or not, but I um, encourage you to get a hold of me by going to my website, Balanced Life by Debbie, D-E-B-I dot com, and reaching out to me and seeing if we can uh, make a connection that's going to help you be a little healthier down the road. I also want to tell you that my show is interactive and I'm live. So in order for it to be interactive, I encourage you to call in and ask a question, make a comment, wherever you feel like you might want to get involved with it. So the phone number here is area code 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. Nine nine. So call us if you feel compelled. If you can't because you're working or it's not a good time or you're watching after the fact, go to my Facebook page, Balanced Life by Debbie, or my YouTube channel, Balanced Life by Debbie, and right under the show, ask a question, make a comment. My guest or myself will get back to you post-show. So there you have it. We're going to get on with the show. So enjoying a balanced life includes being in a healthy, loving, and long-lasting relationship for most. But not everybody has been successful at being able to have that. My guest today is April Davis, who is the owner and president of Luma Luxury Matchmaking. April's career with Luma began when she realized she needed to take her skill of intuition and understanding people to the next level. April was an MBA graduate by 20 and started working her way up a Fortune 500 company while also pursuing modeling on the side. But there was one thing she knew more than anything, and it was how to help people find love. And not just the butterflies and hearts types of love, the real long-lasting take-home-to-mama marriage material type of love. April was a matchmaker for years in her own circle of friends and acquaintances. Whenever she met somebody who was single, she would naturally start thinking of who she might know that would be a good fit for that person. The challenges involved in singles meeting quality matches became increasingly apparent. Boy, do I know. And it was then that April realized she needed to take her matchmaking from a hobby to a full-time career. She took her professional background in progress improvement and applied it to the dating industry, industry to create Luma Luxury Matchmaking. Luma is a nationwide matchmaking service serving clients in over 40 states, and it's now one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies. Today, we're going to unpack all the ins and outs of dating, no matter where you are at that point in your love journey. April will be discussing dating tips and advice to help singles navigate through what can be a very confusing and frustrating process. So will you please welcome my guest, April Davis, to the show. 
And there you are. Hi, April. Hi, April. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me today, and thanks for agreeing to do the show. This is something that I like to get touch on at least once a year on my show. Relationships, lasting relationships, finding love, uh, keeping love, and uh, finding the experts that um, know all the answers to that. Because really i'm i'm baffled so i really appreciate your um your knowledge and expertise in this field and coming on the show today i know a lot of frustrated people including myself so yes. <laughs> <laughs> um but before we get into all the qu dating questions the hows the what's the what the why's and uh what we should be doing um, I want to hear a little bit about you, aside from what I discussed in or what I mentioned in the opening, a little bit about your journey, your path to uh, becoming a full-time matchmaker and where you're from. You start from your childhood. Right, right. Actually, the first couple I ever put together was when I was 16, and they were a couple that they were both in their like, 30s, later 30s, and... Um, I knew them both, knew they were single and thought that they should meet and ended up getting them together and they ended up getting married. And so I've always had a thing for connecting people, whether it was through, you know, romantic relationships or business or of course just friendships. And, you know, it's one of the easiest ways that you can have a profound change in someone's life and just by making an introduction. You know, if you think about some of the people that you're closest to, a lot of times they were, you met them through someone else mm -hmm. and, you know, imagine how your life would be if you had never met them. And so we really do great things for people by um, facilitating these introductions. And, you know, when I was, uh, well, then to, well, 2010, my background's in business and I've always been entrepreneurial. And then I realized that, Hey, I can take this kind of hobby of mine or interest and take it to the next level and actually create a company. And that's what I did. I first started interviewing uh, all the different companies out there to get, you know, do my research and understand the pros and cons of, of each model and then came up with our own model. And um, just, it's been growing ever since, you know, the first year I just met with people. I didn't take on any clients that, um, that had paid me. I just was doing it for fun and learning. And then from there just started compounding and building a building and now we're nationwide and I have 16 matchmakers all across the country. Wow. That's impressive. That's really cool. And so it, you just, is it a feeling you have? How does it work? Like that you, that you knew that you just from that very first time you made that match when you were 16, that you had this great uh, i want to say talent for knowing certain personalities that are going to go together and really complement each other mm -hmm. and you it, just took that front and center yeah it's that and it's um a lot of it is looking at people's values you know what's important to them mm -hmm. so my husband is a divorce attorney of all things he's on the other side of the spectrum and I would hear stories from him and um, we'd be discussing relationships all the time. And I would hear about why these people are getting divorced. And I, it, to me, it was obvious that like, they should have never got to get her, together in the first place. But, you know, when you first start falling for somebody, you have that chemistry and it's hard to see red flags when you have those colored goggles, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about the red flags today yeah. so we can get kind of out of the love fog and pay attention to the bigger picture because right. I think that you're right. That's important. And yeah, yeah I bet. You, yeah. So that must be very handy having your, I know I had read that, that your husband is a divorce attorney and I'm actually working with, I've been, I've had three divorce attorneys over the last 10 years. So, um, I know what that, is like in the frustration, you know, and, and I'm sure what you've seen and what you've talked to your husband about has probably aided you in helping finding people for a full circle connection, you know, that they, that everything is, is in alignment there because it's, you know, you, it's tough. I think one of the hardest things that we can go through in life is divorce. And yeah. I was with somebody for, 30 almost 35 years total 
and and we have a grown family together and now a grandchild together and I think that it's very very difficult to suddenly have a change that abruptly happen in your life and whether it's through divorce or you lose a significant other it's it's really tough and then thinking that you'll never find love again is a whole other thing so yeah I think I mean that's kind of key is you know helping people realize that they are on a journey and there is light at the end of the tunnel yes there's definitely hope I'm actually really excited for people you know especially people say in their 50s or 60s that were married for 20 some years or 30 years and I get really excited for them because you know they're about to go on this really exciting journey and changes in their life and you know it's kind of like being in your 20s and dating but you have money now and you can afford to do things and um you know yourself a lot better and you've learned a lot more and you've you've um you have these values and you know the person that you're looking for what what's going to work for you and what's not and what's important and what isn't yeah there's something to be said for experience and especially experience you know with a significant other and in the dating world because you can kind of there's a way to weed that out during the whole dating process right you can you say oh you're with somebody who you think this is never going to work out because of this and then somebody else because of that so right there not that you have a checklist but you know you you just know things that are red flags that are going to come up based on when you first meet somebody and that's the frustration of being in the dating scene and being on dating apps and being in uh on dating sites and not really knowing and you know I do have a lot of friends who like what you did you know with your friends before you started your company Mm -hmm. who oh I have the perfect person for you Oh, I want to fix you up. I want you to meet somebody. And then I still come across the same red flag issues, maybe different than the dating app issues, but I still have red flag issues. And or maybe I don't, but they do with me, you know. So it's it it is a very frustrating process Mm -hmm. at this age. And then I have what I was mentioning to you earlier, my daughter's age where she's looking for somebody to start a family with. She's looking, you know, and she looks at that person differently in terms of financial stability in that respect. And will they mm-hmm. make a good parent, father? Uh, will they be, will they work with me and my values on how I want to raise a family? You know, and that that is a very difficult thing to do in your early 30s when you're also, your clock is ticking, right? Yeah. And I think your value system is a little bit different too when you're younger and there's, there's all these jokes and memes out there around, okay, when you're in your twenties, you're like, ew, I don't like him because he parts his hair on the side or something like that. Or some just silly, more frivolous things more. Yeah. 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 And then when you're in your thirties, you're like, where are all our, where are all the good guys? <laughs> like, yeah, well, you missed them because you were being picky about whatever dumb thing. Were you, <laughs> they, you know, and I used to, so I met my ex when I was 19. And so I had so many friends continue to go through the dating scene for the next like 15 years, right? Until they settle, some of them until they settle down. And mm-hmm. I always thought, oh God, I don't have to do that. I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky, you know? Cause there, some are being really nitpicky about foolish things and other ones that, you know, are now, you know, aging out and being able to have a family. And now they feel like they missed the boat, just like what you were saying. and. I was, you know, quote unquote, lucky enough to be able to find the person that I settled down with at an early age and didn't have to go through that. But now I'm sort of getting payback on the other end because I became single in um, my mid 50s. So it it became a different, whole different landscape of how to date, like you were saying, and what to date. And uh, yeah, my criteria is different. I don't care how they part their hair, you know, <laughs> none of that matters. And of course, they're always, I don't care what age you are, there has to be some physical connection, some kind of connection that that spark that you feel in order mm-hmm. to keep moving forward. And they may be a very nice person, but you're not feeling that. But it's I'm definitely not looking for, you know, the perfect sculpted surfer rat that I was looking for 
when I was in college and I found it, you know, and, and that's your totally, values change a little bit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so getting into the whole finding your match and dating scene, what do you what do you think is the biggest challenge? Let's start with that women have today, um, because it's a different day and age for mm -hmm. dating than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago with the Me Too movement and all right. of that. What do you think are the biggest challenges? Well, I mean, you you just said it. The Me Too movement is one thing that has um, has changed. But I think also that women, because they're so independent and they're strong and they're doing their own thing, they they want um, they want what they want. And they still feel like the guy should make the first move and he should pursue her. But yet it's almost impossible for, it makes it really difficult. And, and women don't, they definitely don't help make it easy for guys to be able to um, make that first move. So I think a lot of women need to be open-minded as to actually making that first move and opening the door anyway so the guy feels comfortable and if you think about back in the day when the ladies used to drop their handkerchief and the guy could pick it up for them mm. that was the lady basically giving him an opening and allowing him to feel comfortable and confident in pursuing her so women have to find some way to do that to uh, some kind of opening in order to get the guy to, you know, maybe you talk to him and let him feel like he is making that first move. Or maybe she, she needs to, maybe she has to ask him out to coffee for the first time. If she's, you know, if you, you're used to going after what you want in life in every other aspect, you know, why not when one of the most important areas of your life, you know, your relationship, why not pursue that person that you want? Because I guarantee you, He's probably getting pursued by somebody else or other women will recognize the value in him and they're willing to do the work and they're willing to, you know, take those steps in order to pursue a relationship with him. Wow. That makes so much sense. That's, you know, and that's actually really good advice. A, a funny story just happened on Saturday. So I was at a wine tasting, a winery venue um, with my daughter and her girlfriend and okay. uh, the sun was going down. It was really beautiful. And we had gone, uh, my daughter's girlfriend and I went inside to buy a bottle of wine for the three of us to share. And the guy behind the counter was like, you know, and he was my age or, or maybe a little bit younger. It's hard to say, but I would, I'm not quite sure that he was in his 60s yet, but he was and I, I, I just kind of got speechless because he was helping us and stuff, and I didn't say anything, and I smiled a lot and, or whatever, and we went back and sat down with my daughter, and I looked at my daughter, and I looked at her girlfriend, and I said, oh, my God, Allie, that is my my type right there and she said why didn't you say anything and my daughter's like go back in there and say something and I said well I don't even know he's not wearing a ring but I don't know if he's a, I can't say I'm not doing that and she's like if you don't do that then that's not going to happen and I said well then it's not going to happen and I completely chickened out I completely chickened out and I, you know who knows if I would have taken that risk? I mean, I know where he works, <laughs> but so I could, could, and it's not that far from where I live, so I could go back. But it, yeah. um, it, it just it, the whole thought of going up and saying, "Hey, I just I can't do it." I'm it maybe in a bar scene after a drink or something. I don't know, but it just didn't feel right to do it mm -hmm. in that setting. Or well, I've never done that. So I mean, you could go and order a drink from them and then just talk to them like, hey, um, you know, are you from around here? You know, just open, just start chit chatting with them and then introduce yourself to them, you know, offer your hand and, you know, introduce yourself and then just keep talking. And then if you, if he doesn't ask you out, you can always just say something like, you know, this is been fun I'm meeting you and I'd love to continue this conversation maybe we can grab a coffee or something sometime yeah and then you can see what he says yeah you know? just give it a shot just throw it out there because men you know, do throw it out I've been approached like that before I've had right. I've had that happen in grocery stores walking across the street mm -hmm. I've had that happen to me but I've never done it on the other well, end well or just you know 
have started a conversation could you don't turn it into this mountain event that you have to climb the whole mountain okay just say i'm gonna just go talk to them and chit chat with them Tell and you stop so your expectations are different on yourself you know you're not putting as much pressure versus like i'm gonna ask them out well you're at least giving him the opportunity so he can and yeah or at least you can learn more about him if you're talking to him you can ask him oh so do you have kids mary blah blah you know yeah. and you'll find out if he's single that that's really good advice and i probably I, I in my head at that moment it was like how am i gonna go i i can't make small talk i didn't think about small talk i only thought about go in there and go for it you know it a mountain <laughs> of an event so you right super, it's yeah that's scary because you've built it up into this big thing but if you just break it down like i'm just getting to know a cool person and learn more about him i'm not trying to get married to him no. tomorrow just yeah i mean i don't even know if he has a personality that i would right. i don't know nothing <laughs> right. about him other than that's my look you know he it's a guy who takes crazy. really good physical care of himself and he's got this sexy vibe about him and you know and when you're oh. older and guys are in their 50s and 60s approaching 70 it's hard to find i'm sorry right. but it really is right. um but just take away the expectations of yourself from yourself and then you it won't be yeah. as intimidating i know i did it um my husband i met him through a it was because of a friend, you know, he was doing a divorce of a friend and we started talking. And then, um, I was downtown where he works one day and I just texted him like, Hey, coffee. And I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I definitely, I wasn't thinking about it as a romantic thing. It was just like, I like this person. I want to get to know them better and spend some time with them. And so he always is remind, he reminds me that I asked him out first, which, oh. It's kind of funny. You, and then, you did your own matchmaking for yourself, yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. basically. But in my mind, it wasn't, I wasn't pursuing, I wasn't trying to like, find a husband. I was just wanting to get to know someone. Yeah, it felt and, natural. It felt natural. Yeah, and it's definitely not thinking about it <laughs> like that. And then um, I have a, another girlfriend that she's really tall. So the, the men that she is attracted to are few and far between. And I've always encouraged her, like, if you see someone, just go up to them and start talking because, you know, it's... You're limited. Yeah. That and, like, she just, again, I, like, I will just keep telling, like, the really, the guys that are good looking or the ones that people are attracted to for whatever reason, they're getting pursued by other women. Yeah. So if you, and then they're lazy. Okay. They're not going to go out and go mm -hmm. after anyone else because they have these women coming to them a lot of times, or they just haven't developed those skills, right? They're used to women going after, going after them. And so you might have to take that step and make it easy for them to get to know you. Yeah. So. That makes a lot of sense, especially in this day. I, I know I've talked to friends, guy friends who are a little, you know, because of the Me Too, and then we'll, um, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to talk about the biggest challenges for guys in the Me Too and is the art of flirting still alive, you know, in that respect. So um, we'll be right back after I take a message from my first sponsor. I have been a wine enthusiast for many decades. But for a while, I had to stop drinking wine because of the sleepless nights and the headaches that I would have in the morning, even after only one glass. Does this sound familiar? So for the past five years, and since the start of my show, I've been looking for a healthy wine. And finally, I found the answer I've been looking for, dry farm wines. Dry farm wines are lab tested for purity, just 12.5% alcohol or less, 0.15 grams of sugar or less per glass very low sulfites, and free of toxic additives. Dry farm wines are dry farmed with healthy, biodiverse soil, and the taste, bright and vibrant, due to no manipulation. I can't say enough about the amazing wines that I've tried, and now you too can drink wine and not worry about how it is negatively affecting your health. Just go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash balanced life by Debbie so you too can taste the love put into every bottle. Okay, we're back with our anonymous secret audience that is listening. 
and watching because you can hear us too. Don't forget, if you've got a question, if you're in the dating scene and you want to call in, the number here is 323-524-2599. And if you're watching after the fact, go ahead and make a comment, ask a question on my Facebook page or my Instagram or my YouTube channel, and we'll get back to you with the answer um, or comment. Uh, so when we left off, we had gotten to the biggest challenges for women. And what is the biggest challenge for men right now um, with between the pandemic and the Me Too movement right on top of it? Yeah, I think we kind of touched on it a bit in that it's challenging for men to be able to make a move and pursue women because they don't want to be perceived as a creeper or um or just you know be rejected in general everybody's afraid of rejection Mm -hmm. and it's become so easy now to just hide behind your phone and apps and you can just message people that way or ask somebody out through their social media and so so i also think that it's just the way that the roles have changed over the years it makes it challenging for men because women have taken on a lot of masculine characteristics and that they're you know there's alpha women just like there's alpha men and these alpha women will make it really they don't they don't leave their masculinity at the office because you you have to take on these masculine type roles and to in order to be successful in maybe corporate america or if they're a physician or a lawyer or whatever but they don't take off that that hat at work and then they go into their personal life and they are still the same way and that is challenging for men because they want to feel like men they don't want to be with a man if they were they'd be gay so they're looking for you know they want somebody that is going to allow them to be the man in the relationship and feel comfortable and confident and have that femininity so they feel comfortable and um, you know it's a soft place to land when they go home and they're with their their woman. And so I think that is all those things there. And there's just confusion about their role and what they are supposed to, you know, how are they supposed to show up in a relationship because the roles have changed so much in relationships. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, it's just very different than our grandparents' age, for example. I've talked to many men, some that I've dated, some are my friends um, in the dating scene, and mm-hmm. um, and some of my daughter's friends who are also in the dating scene that, you know, are way younger, and they're all a little bit timid, I guess mm-hmm. you would say, about making the first move or about um, when it comes to, you, you know, you know you're flirting, you know you like each other, you want to ask each other out, or they met on an app or or through some friends or at a party or a bar or something. But they're all a little hesitant about, you know, when is this going to look at, how do they approach it without being looked at as b- trying to objectify them, you know, the, the woman that they're with. And they're all a little bit apprehensive about how you know getting coming on maybe with is even more their personality that they would do it in a more aggressive way but now they're pulling way back right and it, I think it's because of this you know well they're raised you know around um around with other women and they hear all the stories and stuff and they don't want to be a creep and they don't want to feel like a creep and so it's scary for them to do it it's easier for them to maybe hide behind like i said behind their social media yeah and shoot their shot (laughs) yeah big time so Mm -hmm. it's definitely more challenging now and uh, you know i do you think the art of flirting is still like alive and well and that people oh. can flirt successfully without absolutely. feeling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good. I mean, you do, you want to make sure that um, it is going in the right direction and that it's appropriate, right? You don't want to be, you don't want to be flirting with somebody that's married or mm-hmm. um, sending the wrong message to someone if you aren't really wanting a relationship or interested in them and you don't want to be flirting with people if it's going to send um just the wrong message right <laughs> of course but yeah the art of flirting is definitely for real and it's important okay well that's good that you can that that it's okay to still find that 
you, you know, not be timid about that, you know, because mm -hmm. I've been known to flirt when I like somebody, but I also, you know, there's also this fear that it's not going to be reciprocated or, um, I mean, I, it's part of my personality. I flirt with women too, but not in a sexual way. You know what I mean? It's yeah, just, you're just to, yeah, it's just like a gregarious fun thing. And that's yeah, exactly. When you, when you were saying that, I just, I started thinking about that too, is that you can practice flirting with anyone and everyone. It's just being, it's basically being charming. It's being, um, playful and making, I think a lot, in a lot of ways, you're actually making the other person feel good about themselves and, um, just laughing, you know, that can be perceived as true oh, flirtatious type yeah of it probably gives them a sense of comfort too that it's okay to, to keep on this route i mean i've had it turn on me 360 where um you know the, people have thought that i've opened the door to a whole sexual in you know no no that just just getting to, to know you it's just who i am it's just it's who friendly. i am yeah just being yeah. friendly mm -hmm. so when it comes to dating and what are what are red flags that you should be aware of on like first dates right away when you start to get to know somebody yeah well i would say to begin with you should figure out what what your values are so we always will we'll have people do like what are your three your three needs three wants three nice to haves and three deal breakers mm -hmm. and look at the the most important things like okay somebody that has family values maybe they're of a certain religion um, those are, those are really the, the, some of the core things that are most important to, to you and your future. And then, um, maybe you're nice to haves or wants or, okay, somebody that is a certain height or, um, they're into working out or whatever it might be mm -hmm. and kind of prioritize what's the most important to you. Mm -hmm. So then you have those deal breakers and you have those needs, um, ready, you know, you're, you're written down because what's going to happen is you're going to meet somebody that doesn't align with those, but you have chemistry and, you know, you're really attracted to them. And then you'll start to be like, oh, well, I can, I can work through that. I can ignore that. We'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe I can convince him or her down the road to have kids. Oh. And, and then yeah, I've seen it implode way, way too many times. And that's why I think it's really important to figure out what your values are, write them down and have them. So make sure that you're not pursuing something or someone that butts against those values. That makes so much sense. That's such a good idea. Yeah, because people will, will overlook things mm -hmm. because of the chemistry and always Figure when, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And whatever, you know, things always in the beginning, it's the, the honeymoon period of dating. You, you know, the other thing I have, my friends and I have come across a lot is something called mosting. You know, mosting is somebody who comes on so strong and you think this is the one because they're telling you what you want to hear. You've got chemistry They're you know, that you think you have shared values with them. They're physically what you're looking for. They're financially stable. Uh, all these things have come together and you're dating for like two weeks and then they ghost you done oh. gone and that has happened and that's really frightening because you're not quite so you have to start looking for the signs of what our typical mosters are like and one of them is most of them have narcissistic um yeah you know, characteristics what, right so, oh, that's yeah. exactly what i was thinking when you were saying like that's usually how a narcissist comes on and um but yeah the ghosting part of it is just another added layer. Yeah, so. and it's just, it's part of the frustrations and the, you know, you gotta look for those red flags. You gotta look for those narcissists when you're dating. So I imagine that um, you weed that out for people and that is the benefit. What are the benefits of going with a, a professional matchmaker or of someone like you? Well, one of the challenges with a narcissist is that they're really good <laughs> they can be really good they're basically con artists in mm -hmm. a lot of ways but um there are some you know some true signs of them that we can we can look out for but a lot of times you don't know until you're working with them. we're working with them or we've had set them up on some dates because 
anyone can put their best foot forward for a little while and then eventually their true colors yeah and then you, show, the, you right? they show themselves yeah mm -hmm. exactly right. so, so so do of, you weed out the narcissist then is what you're saying once you well, realize that yeah as much as we can but i mean people it, people are you know they're people they're really good at camouflage yeah <laughs> and they got this down they're, yeah you know, saying whatever they need to say but there are we're pretty fluent in some of the telltale signs and um they happen we i mean we just we we run into them quite a bit so there's some pretty obvious signs but then there's also those that are are really good and um and it's it's not as obvious so but you just you that, my, that's my point is you just never know and that's why it's so important to take your time to get to know somebody it's so important to do your research and diligence behind someone so i always say trust but do your homework and in that way you can maybe it's um getting references like you could be you could talk to friends of um, people that maybe date, dated um that person up in the past and kind of get maybe get some insights there or you know you can just don't be naive don't stick your head in the sand and just assume that you know everybody is a good person like you are and maybe and that you don't know what their their motives are or what's going on behind closed doors you can't just assume that um everybody has the best of intentions <laughs> so. right so it is really hard to um be in the dating game at any age and um it's uh you know there's so many mistakes that we make as uh people in the dating scene and we feel like after a certain after a date or after even a short-term relationship with somebody you're like okay I'm, here's the things i'm not gonna do what are some common mistakes that you think that people make when they're dating some common mistakes they make um well <laughs> there's when it comes to dating just in general i would say that people's expectations that around um around what a relationship is it can kind of cloud their cloud what uh, what is really reality right we have this mindset we're a culture that we're so used to getting whatever we want if we want a car we can get the color we can get the features whatever it is that we want we can go on amazon and get whatever we want tomorrow we can order up a person on an app and <laughs> that's not that's not a relationship so it's in it's just important to have realistic expectations of a relationship and that it's going to take work it's not just about having good chemistry with someone yeah that's great and all but it's you want to make sure that you have the right values and you can grow together you know and all those all those things that ultimately or what make a relationship it's not you're not purchasing a person you're building something together right you're working with another human being to build a relationship a, a, a is, long lasting it's, one right it's completely different than anything else that we do yes in our lives which makes it even scarier and more challenging um do you think that oh i just lost my train of thought but do you like f um if for people do you think there's like a dating fatigue where people start to get just I, I can't do this anymore I'm tired of this this I mean I have people have been friends that have been in and out of the dating scene longer than I have and are just like hands up I can't do it anymore Get over it yeah <laughs> that's yeah. probably where you come in where you guys can take over right and just really yeah I mean we can but a lot you don't necessarily want to meet people when they're at that point yeah because, that's true they're not yeah, the best they have clientele to, yeah yeah you have to put forth the effort and they might be jaded at that point and have their they've gone down the wrong road for so long and thinking that they're looking for something really specific and um their expectations are whatever they are and really that's it's not healthy or it's not realistic and mm -hmm. they could use that course correcting and coaching early on and when you talk about coaching i know that a lot of your coaches are also um life coaches so do you you obviously help people and i'm not going to say groom because i don't like that word because it can be used negatively but um but you prep them for let's say the first date 
to mm -hmm. make sure, you know, that you look good and, or, you know, what is, what kind of prep should we be doing, you know, should a first date or even beyond a first date, what, what should we take uh, notice of that we need to, for ourselves? Yeah, well, there's a lot of areas that you can take inventory of within yourself. But um, one, of course, obviously is like physical appearance. You know, are you, is your hair up to date? Do you have a stylish hairstyle? Do you need to um, maybe change that up a bit? Your wardrobe, how about your physical health? Are you working out? Are you, could you stand to you lose a couple of pounds you know, or, or 50? You know, those kinds mm -hmm. of things are going to all help you to attract somebody because initially that's what it's all about is attraction. As much as people want to change that and wish it wasn't true it is it's just a fact of nature every everything is that way every living thing is that way anyway they are trying to attract each other initially and then from there and but attraction can come in a lot of different forms too so For that's sure. why it's important to look at these other areas beyond just the physical maybe um it's you know something around your personality so or you need to build up your confidence and confidence can come from a lot of different areas too. It can be from maybe you have a good network and social life, really healthy social life, or um, maybe you have a lot of different interests and hobbies and skills. And, and if not, then maybe that's something that needs to be looked at and um, build upon because you wanna have things that you can talk about and people like people that are interesting and um, people that have a lot going on in, in their world or, you know, are passionate about something. I hear that's a lot that, yeah, I just, I, I don't care what they do for a living as long as they have something that they're passionate about. And because that's attractive in people, they, mm -hmm. they, they can get going or they're interested in something, then that's always, it's fun to learn from people like that too. And um, again, it gives you something to talk about, but if your interests are you know, eating out with friends or just watching TV. It's not that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot to talk about um, when you're on a date. So it's, you know, having a lot of areas to pull from to make you a well-rounded, interesting individual. It's and good. then that can make you, you know, magnetic. I think, of course, not everybody is going to be that really gregarious, fun personality type, but there's things that you can do to kind of turn up the dial and be more interesting, more various, more, more fun, maybe you just are funny. Um, and it could be, you could take a class in improv or something, or, um, or just learn about it. Or, or really just practice it, quite frankly, practice flirting, practice yeah. joking around with people and stuff and yeah. do it with the person that, that's checking you out at the grocery store. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just, um, really making a conscious effort to yeah. be whoever you can be, whoever you want to. Right. You know, really I find you. that, uh, being authentically you and authentically who I am, I'm definitely outgoing, gregarious and talkative. But the other thing that I find, and I've actually been working on this is being a good listener and let it's uh, letting the person that you're sitting across from or taking a walk with or whatever, that mm -hmm. you're genuinely interested. And if I don't want to be on this date, then I may not do that. But if I want to try to see where this can go, mm -hmm. I want to make sure my listening skills are up to par, you know, Cause mm -hmm. I, or, because if they're not, people get offended. And then I will look like the narcissist, which I am not and don't want to look like. So I, I find that to be very... Um, almost, I have to be conscientious of that too. And I am genuinely interested. I'll ask a ton of questions when we get on a certain subject, maybe about their career or somewhere they've been lately. Yeah. And, you know, um, but listening skills, when I know somebody's off in la la land, it's, that's my red flag. I don't want to pursue anything, you know, because that, where are we going to go from there? If we can't do it in the beginning, it's not going to, like you said earlier, you think you won't, can change this person because maybe there's a physical attraction, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to change that. They're not listening now. They're definitely going to get worse. They're not going to get better in that scale, yeah. you know? <laughs> so I find that to be a really important, important thing. Um, right. I want to get into, um, oh, I'm there. sorry. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, you're spot on in that. Well, people like people who like them, right? And if you're showing them that you're interested in them, you're listening to what they're saying, you're asking follow-up questions, you know, well, they will have the best conversation of their life because, well, everyone likes to talk about themselves, right? Yeah. And now here you have an audience that's really interested in what you have to say. And so um, it, it's just, I've had people tell me, I'm like, this was a really fun conversation. I'm like, this is great. And I'm like, yeah, I barely said anything. Yeah. I just asked you questions because I was curious. Well, people want, think, want to be heard. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think though those are great characteristics and people that are uh, good listeners. They're curious, they're genuine, and, you know, asking, asking good questions. Because you can learn something from anyone. So even if you don't like them romantically, at least you can you can garner some information from them and yeah. learn. Well, whatever it is that they're passionate about. And yeah, then also, definitely. Oh, I'm a people person. So for me, I mean, I do hit a little bit of fatigue on the dating end, but for me, dating mm. is meeting someone new, hearing a new story, a new life journey, a new, you know, personality to come across. And in some cases, a new friend to make if it were not going to you know, be going further. We're going to take a final break here. And then when we come back, I wanted to get into why a matchmaking service and how you work in our last few minutes. Okay. So we'll be right back after this message. Already. Without looking at labels, do you actually know what is in the cleaning products that you use in your home? If you haven't addressed this yet, it's likely that you are spraying toxic and dangerous chemicals in your home. Three common ingredients that you want to avoid at all costs are ammonia, fragrance, and bleach. These ingredients and chemicals can contribute to chronic respiratory problems, allergic reactions, allergies, <coughs> cancer, hormonal issues, headaches, and more. So what's the solution to a healthier, clean home for your family? Tease Organics, all-purpose cleaner, and room sprays. Tease products are formulated with the power of an essential oil blend. Her all-purpose cleaner gives you a clean surface, shower, toilet, or simply just use it to spot clean or dust, and all without harsh chemicals. And to make it even better, Tease Organics all-purpose cleaner uses 100% organic essential oils and has a sweet yet spicy herbal aroma with hints of citrus. Imagine a fresh, inviting scent and sparkling clean home that you know is free from toxic, potentially harmful, and cancer-causing chemicals. I use these products, and I can personally attest to all of the above. And right now, enjoy a 15% discount by applying 15 Debbie, D-E-B-I, to your order. So check out these amazing products by Tease Organics that are healthy for you and your home. All right, we're back. And we're going to finish up the conversation. My guest today is April Davis, and she is the founder and the president of Luma matchmaking, luxury matchmaking. And we were going to get into our final few minutes of why a matchmaking service and what you provide, how, how it would work for somebody to get in touch with you. Oh, yeah. Is she on silent? No, nope, you're there. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, so you want to know? Yeah, how yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was a question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How? What? What? What's um, it? What, tell me about what it's like to get yeah. involved with you. So all they have to do to get started, anyway, is just go to our website. It's lumasearch.com, and it's L-U-M-A. Luma stands for luxury matchmaking, but L-U-M-A search.com and just fill out the profile form. And then they can schedule a time to meet with a matchmaker and talk to the matchmaker about who they are, who they're looking for. And then we can determine if we can take them on as a client and match them with someone. And if so, then they'll work with their matchmaker one-on-one. -on -one. And it's very much a concierge type of service in that we um, are essentially we're an extension of our clients to find that person. So we're vetting people, we're going on those first dates for them. And on average, we end up interviewing about 50 people per client. So it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we're, doing, yeah. we're staying busy. And then 
Yeah, it's... Um, Does it's, everybody have to be in your database to make a match for them? So do, do, does the woman and the man both have to be there? Or do you, know, like, if you have a client and you know of somebody who isn't in your database or one of your other matchmakers does, knows, oh, I have a perfect single friend or person right. I know, will you try to match them with somebody out of the database? Yeah, I mean, they technically then have to join the database, okay, but then, gotcha. <laughs> but we recruit people all the time. So yeah, absolutely. We're constantly, I have a full-time recruiter on my team and that's all she does is looks for people. And then we have alliances with other matchmakers that we can help each other to find matches and because they might ah. know somebody, they might have a great client. So yeah, it's all about finding the right one for our clients. So the, the advantage of hiring a matchmaking service like yours would be you know as opposed to going on an app or going online is mm -hmm. that you really do curate you really do between the vetting is so that's something we have to there's so much guesswork involved right and it's also just having access to the kind of people that you're actually looking for yeah because I don't to say if you're a good looking woman, really good looking woman, you put your profile online, you're getting bombarded with hundreds, if not thousands of weirdos <laughs> that are messaging you. And um, it can be quite disheartening really quickly. So oftentimes they delete their profile and they get out of there mm -hmm. or men can just get exhausted because people have different intentions. You know, not everybody is there because they're truly looking for a relationship. Some are just looking for a hookup. Some are just looking for attention. Mm -hmm. And so you are getting the kind of people, um, both that they want a relationship, but also we just work with a higher echelon type of individual that meaning that they well, a higher net worth probably <laughs> that they can afford this kind of service. And, um, they're educated, typically really intelligent and successful individuals that, um, and attractive because we want people that others are going to be attracted to in yeah. order for us to be successful. Successful. Yeah, I get it. And then you help them. You give them tips on how they can change, like you said, their weight or their appearance, their hair color, or their hair style, yeah. their makeup choices, their wardrobe yeah. choices. You you guide them yeah. on that. So or we might um, give them a photo shoot. It just depends on their needs. Yeah, so. which is really good. I you know I live in L.A., so the dating scene is very competitive here. Even women in you know I'm in my mid sixties, and even women in their sixties take care of themselves here, and you know and and it's my business and uh, you know I lead by example but it's still very competitive and very difficult for me so mm -hmm. I um, I appreciate a service like what you have to you know to vet that and and because there's a lot of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for where people are just you know it's just about the looks and they can't get down oh, yeah, to the superficial yeah reality. superficial yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I um I want you to uh, tell us again how to get a hold of you for people who are just listening because we're on all platforms for listening like Apple, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And then um, I want you to leave us with some final words of wisdom, some final thoughts, if that's okay. Okay. So to get a hold of us, all you have to do is go to lumasearch.com, L-U-M-A search dot com and fill out the profile form and from there you will be prompted to schedule a time to meet with a matchmaker and she'll get to know you you'll do a, we have to do a video chat with anybody that we work with because we actually want to see what people really look like and not just their you know picture that could or may or may not have a filter on it and um so and we want to get a sense of who they are and their vibe and everything and then we determine if we can take them on as a client and then go from there to find their match. And you have a really high success rate, don't you, April? Over 83% of our clients end up in a relationship. That's amazing. That's me. You hear that, guys? Get a hold of April. <laughs> if you're dating, get a hold of April. Um, and final words, final thoughts for the audience on um, anything you want to say. Let's say, you know, who a matchmaker is for and the way to be successful with using a matchmaking service it's you know it's for people that are ready and um, willing to do the work to and they want to be in a serious committed relationship 
and um, it the way the, to get the best results from it is to really go in with an open mindset because you know what you have been doing in the past hasn't been working and I think people get so caught up in this well I need I just need to find this person I just need to find a person that has xyz characteristics and then I'll be able to be in a great relationship and you know um, or it will be done and they get so fixated on their list and that they are missing a lot of great opportunities and the reality is you don't know you have no idea who you might have that chemistry with it's you while you do need to focus on the things that are below the surface the values you know those are the most important things but you don't know what kind of cover your person is going to come with. And so it's important to, to just be open-minded and take the advice um, of the matchmaker because they're not just doing this, you know, for, they're not telling you this for fun. They do it because they live it every single day. And they just talk, they talk to singles every single day about what they're looking for. And they have, they're just a wealth of knowledge. The mm -hmm. average tenure on my team is 14 years. So <laughs> there's a lot of, great people that have a lot of great experience that they can relay to you. So just have an open mind, an open heart, and you'll be more likely to be successful. You know, it's easy to pick people apart and find all the negatives or all the things wrong with, with them. But if you look for the positives and I just think having a loving, open heart will have you, will just improve your odds so much. I love that. We're going to leave on that note. Love it. Having a loving, open heart. I love that. And I thank no, you so much and non-judgmental. That's mm -hmm. having a loving, open heart. I think that goes hand in hand. They're both, they're one in the same. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you for your time and your expertise and all of your advice today. And hang on, but I'm going to say goodbye to our audience. And I want you to know that I thank you as well. And you can keep this conversation going by going to my Facebook page and or my uh, Instagram, Balanced Life by Debbie, and just uh, make a comment, ask a question. Like I said, the conversation continues after the fact. But also keep going out and having those conversations that connect to a healthier you. Bye, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Mm -hmm.